Hey y'all, how's it going? Well, you know, when we got together a few weeks ago on that last Wednesday night, lots of you weren't here. Uh, some were sick, some stay home because of the bad weather. I surely didn't realize we wouldn't be back together for so long. It's kind of crazy, isn't it? So for the next few weeks, until we can see each other again, I have some things planned until it's safe for church to start back. Now, listen, I know all of you got those school packets, and I know y'all were right in the middle of working on them. So if you can pull yourself away from them for just a little while, I thought we'd have our last Toy Story lesson together. So take a minute to think back over all those Toy Story characters and the people from the Bible we talked about over the last few weeks, several weeks. We talked about Woody and David. Does anybody remember Buzz and Noah and maybe Esther and Barbie? And there were many more. Well, who is left? Can you think of someone we have not talked about? Can you think of somebody? Well, if you guessed Forky, you're right. Now, what do you know about Forky? Forky was only in Toy Story 4, right? He's only been in Toy Story 4. And remember, Bonnie made him at school one day because Woody, she was sad and Woody helped her, you know, find things to make. He was made out of a spork, wasn't he? And she named him Forky. Well, when she brought him home from school that day, all Forky did for the next little while was try to throw himself into the garbage because he thought he was trash. And Woody would go dig him out and bring him back and put him in the bed with Bonnie. And he would sneak off again and he would throw himself in the trash because he thought he was garbage. He was a spork and he was supposed to be thrown away. But good old Woody in the movie finally convinced him that he was not garbage, that he was very, very important to Bonnie. So this week, we're not going to hear a story about someone in the Bible. We're going to hear a story about you and God. In the Bible, there's a book called Psalms. David wrote this book. You remember David? We talked about him when we talked about Woody. David killed the giant, and he was a shepherd boy, and he wrote songs. He had a really big talent for writing songs. So this psalm that we're going to talk about is Psalm 139. Now, so listen, you can listen as I read, or you can pause me real quick, run, go get your Bible, then come back and read along, whichever you'd rather do. I'm reading Psalm 139 from a children's Bible. Lord, you have tested me, so you know all about me. You know when I sit down and when I get up. You know my thoughts from far away. You know where I go and where I lie down. You know everything I do. Lord, you know what I want to say even before the words leave my mouth. You are all around me, in front of me and behind me. I feel your hand on my shoulder. I am amazed at what you know. It is too much for me to understand. Your spirit is everywhere I go. I cannot escape your presence. If I go up to heaven, you will be there. If I go down to the place of death, you will be there. If I go east where the sun rises or go to live in the west beyond the sea, even there you will take my hand and lead me. Your strong right hand will protect me. Suppose I wanted to hide from you and said, Surely the darkness will hide me. The day will change to night and cover me. Even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light are the same. You form the way I think and feel. You put me in my mother's womb. I praise you because you made me in such a wonderful way. I know how amazing that was. You could see my bones grow as my body took shape, hidden in my mother's womb. You watched my body grow there. In your book, you wrote about all the days planned for me before any of them ever happened. Your thoughts are beyond my understanding. They cannot be measured. If I could count them, they would be more than all the grains of sand. But when I finished, I would have just begun. You murderers, get away from me. God, kill those wicked people, those who say bad things about you. Your enemies use your name falsely. Lord, I hate those who hate you. I hate those who are against you. I hate them completely. Your enemies are also my enemies. God, examine me and know my mind. Test me and know all my worries. Make sure that I am not going the wrong way. Lead me on the path that has always been right. Now, David knew a lot about God, it sounds like. The psalm tells us about God and how powerful he is. 
It also shows us how much God is involved and cares for each of us. He starts the psalm by praising God for always being there for them. He knows that God knows him from the inside out, what he's thinking, what he's feeling, and even what he's going to do before he does it. David knows that God is all around him, cheering for him and giving him a hand along the way. So, knowing how much God cares for him and everyone else in that way, God feels like smiling and crying at the same time because he just can't believe how great God is. Have you ever seen your mama or your daddy or your grandparents I've done it. crying at a kindergarten graduation or after you've done something just really great? This was how David was feeling, and I can imagine him thinking those things. He was thinking about how great it was and crying big happy tears. So then next, God, David thinks about how he could get away from God. Can you get away from God? He's not trying to get away from him. He's just trying to think if there's anywhere he could get away from God that God wouldn't be able to find him. Do you think there's a place that God, can go, that God won't be able to go to find you? The way David describes it, okay, think of superheroes. Imagine you can fly all the way to the moon or even higher. God's there. Imagine you could drill a deep, deep hole right in the center of the earth like a superhero. God would be there too. So what if you hid in your darkest closet? Would God find you? Yep. You might think it's dark and no one can see us, but God is light. He doesn't see the darkness at all. There is no place on earth beyond that that you can, can go that God wouldn't find you. He's always keeping track of you. Hide and seek won't work with God. Well, then the next thing David talks about is before we were born. Do you think God was there before you were born? Yes, he was. He put you together when you were as tiny as a little marble and even smaller than that. He had big plans for how you would look, what you would be like, and he was part of it all. He knew all about you when you were growing in your mama's stomach. Every freckle, the color of your hair, even wherever you have a little birthmark, he knew about that. And you remember how we've talked about our thumbprints and our fingerprints. No two are alike. Even now, God knows how you're growing and changing, what you like and you don't like. He has big plans for your life, and he's hoping you'll keep looking to him so you can be the very best that you can be. He knows you might be a little worried right now with all this going on. You might be, I don't like the word bored, but you might be. But God is there, and he's got a plan. Another thing I want you always to remember, God doesn't make junk. He made you beautiful, and he made you precious, and he made you in his perfect way. So don't let anybody ever make you think you're not smart enough, good enough. If you're not big enough, pretty enough, you were planned and made by the God of our universe. He made you special and different than everyone else. So God's pretty amazing. David started to think about all of God's thoughts, and he thought how many thoughts he must have. And he thought, you know, if I go to the beach, wouldn't it be nice to go to the beach right now? If I go to the beach and I started counting all that sand, God would still have more thoughts than all of that sand put together. So as David gets to the, closer to the end, he starts thinking about all the wicked people in the world. And I think it really bothers him that there are so many wicked people who don't understand how much God loves us. And they might say ugly words or not say good things about God. And they may even hate God. And David wants all the wick, wicked people that make fun of God and the people that don't use God's name in a nice way to be taken off the earth. He doesn't want to be near them. But God loves them too, doesn't he? Just as much as he loves us. The last two verses, David asked God to do some things for him. He asked God to search his thoughts and his desires. He wants God to see that he loves him and that he's loyal to him. David wants to stay strong and be challenged. Just like us, we have these challenges facing us to be kind to our parents when we want to go play with our friends and do the work that we need to get done. And everybody have a little bit more patience and pray more right now. He wants us to face these difficult times and know that God loves us. The last thing David asked God is if there's any bad thought or sin in him, that God would lead him away from doing that and help his, himself find his way to God in heaven. 
God just taught, just knows so much, and David realizes how God knew everything so much. And it's just such a nice psalm to read on a regular basis, Psalm 139. So whenever you're feeling bad or alone or a little scared or not worth anything, pull out your Bible and find Psalm 139 and read it. Do you remember our Bible verse, the one that we've used a lot this year? Yep, it's from 139, Psalm 139. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalm 139, 14. Okay, before we wrap up, I want to share just a little bit of a craft with you. There's not much to it. It's kind of like Forky, taking a bunch of junk and making it into something. Forky was very important, wasn't he? He ended up being a very, very important person in the movie. Okay, so what I did is, and I asked y'all about this before, I didn't know we were not coming back to go out in the yard and gather up twigs. I just went out in my yard and I gathered up a bunch of twigs, like this, twigs. And all you need is a bunch of twigs a piece of string or yarn or ribbon or even dental floss, whatever you can find without going to the store because I don't want you going to go into the store to do this. Now, you make sure to check with your parents about finding twigs. I do not want a phone call that you have cut down your parents' tree or bush to get twigs. Usually, you can look around the yard and find them, but if you need some help, I will bring you some twigs. I have plenty, so don't go cut anything down. So, what I did was I made two little bunches and I made a bunch about this long and I tied them together. And you see how I kind of tied them, not in the middle on this bunch, but toward the top. And then I made this bunch that are a little shorter. See, they're a little shorter than this group. So what we're gonna, and then you tie them together. I use twine, but you can, like I say, you can use whatever you find around your house. house. All you do is take your two pieces and you're gonna put them together like this. And then, I'm gonna put it down for just a second while I start it. Hold on just a second. Now really, Isaac Isles, do not go uh, cut down a tree or anybody else out there. Hold on just a second, I'm gonna show you how I tied it. And I just tied it like this. And then, you see how I've got them tied together? And then I wrapped it to get it kind of straight. Wrapped it several times like this. And then I ran around this way. And I wrapped it several times like this. And I got it good and straight. And then I just tied it in the back to where it looks. Here's one that I've totally finished. Looks like that. Can't tell when I'm upside down. Looks like that. Now, nothing to it is there. So you can go out and pick up twigs and some string of some sort, and you can make one of these, or you can make several of these. You can give them to a family member. You can put them all over your house, or you can safely find a way to deliver them to a neighbor or somebody who might just need a little extra love these days. So what I really like about this craft is, you know, we just took some twigs, twigs that we normally would just throw on the street or th burn in a burn pile if you live out in the country or somewhere just to get rid of it. It's just trash, isn't it? Uh -oh, one of them broke off. You just And we turned it into something that's very important for us in, the, in our uh, church family, a cross. So see if you have time to go big, gather up some twigs today, but I want you to remember one thing want you to always remember this today and when you're old like me you are a child of God don't ever forget that and God doesn't make garbage promise me you won't forget that ever in your whole life you are a child of God all right let's pray real quick before we leave father thank you so much for today for this beautiful day that I'm sitting up at the church all by myself and I ask you Lord to be with us as families and help us love each other be kind to each other Help us pray to all the people that are affected right now. Help us to pray for our health care workers and all of the people that are taking care of us, Lord. We ask you to help the scientists find some way to uh, get rid of this horrible virus so that we can come back together. Lord, as Easter comes, we ask you to help us remember to keep our eye on the cross. 
that you know everything there is to know, Lord, and it's all in your hands. In your precious name we pray, amen. Now, y'all be watching for me in the next few days. I might be just showing up at your house with something, and I will talk to you soon. Y'all have a good weekend. Bye-bye.